I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to the Cisco Certification Video Practice Exam, where today the topic is Routing Protocol Configuration. We're going to be looking at the details of RIP, OSPF, and EIGRP that we definitely need to know for our CCNA and CCNP exams, but you've also got to know them for the real world as well. As always, we're going to go through the questions fairly quickly, so that leaves us plenty of time at the end of the video to not only go over the answers, but actually see them on live Cisco routers and switches, which is what we like to do here. Also, keep in mind that with all the multiple choice questions in today's exam, these are select all that apply. So, let's jump into question one. What does the number in the router EIGRP command represent? I'll give you just a moment on that, and then we'll go to question two. Which of these terms best describes the use of wildcard masks with EIGRP? Then I need to know which of these statements best describes the use of wildcard masks with OSPF. And you probably see where we're going here. Which of these statements best describes the use of wildcard masks with RIP? And of course, we've always got two versions to consider there with RIP. So let's bring the routers back up and we'll take a look at the answers in just a moment. I do want to invite you out to our website and of course our blog at thebryantadvantage.blogspot.com. Plenty of free videos, free webinars. We've got the on-demand certification webinar site going live very soon and maybe live by the time you see this. And you definitely want to check that out. We've got over 100 free videos, and you can find all of that information at the Bulldog blog. Now let's jump into these questions, and I'll bring a pod up here first to look at EIGRP. Now let's go ahead and clear that off and start a router EIGRP config. And iOS help shows us that this is the autonomous system number. That's how we logically group routers with EIGRP. Doesn't hurt to know the range, of course, but you definitely want to know that that is an AS number and it is required. So let's go to question two about the wildcard masks in EIGRP. We did not always have the ability to use wildcard masks with EIGRP. Now, most of the configurations you see, you see in the real world are going to be using them, but I do want to show you that it's actually optional. Because, of course, we've got to put a network number after the network command itself. And notice that here's where we put the wildcard bits in. But also, whenever you see that CR, that means that whatever you put here is a legal command. So while you're definitely going to see wildcard bits more often than not in real-world networks, it is actually optional. Now with OSPF, it's quite the opposite. It is not optional. It is required that you use wildcard mass in OSPF. If you try to do without it, you're going to get an incomplete command message. And then finally, with our good friend RIP, uh, you can try all you want to, but you cannot use wildcard mass with RIP. All you're going to do is get put in the network command. And actually, we can go ahead and bring that uh, pod back up. And I'll get out of that. We'll exit out of that give you a little bonus question here too. What numeric value can I put after RIP here? With EIGRP we know it's the AS number. With OSPF we know it's the process number. But with RIP there is no number. So you're just going to hit the enter key. So when you do that and then you put in network whatever you want to put in. Notice the only option here is CR. There are literally no options there and that includes wildcard bits. You just can't do it. So that's a good review on wildcard masks for EIGRP, OSPF, and RIP. If you're watching this on YouTube, head out to the YouTube channel. We've got over 100 free videos there waiting for you as well to help you get Cisco certified. Thanks for taking just a few minutes out of your day to watch this video. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933.